This video is going to be a quick look at Revit's lighting simulation tools. Not just in terms of rendering, render quality, those types of things, but actually looking at some of the scientific measurements that we can get from our building information model. So one of the first things that I want to do is establish a new camera view inside. I've got this really small, uh, kind of terrible design, just a small little box with some glass in it so that we can begin to see some daylighting studies happening. So one of the first things that I want to do is let's go into level one and let's establish a new camera view from the corner just across this space so that we have something that we can render out and begin to look at some values on. So I'm just going to stretch everything out and up just a bit just to get an idea of this interior space and the kind of daylight measurements that we can get and a little bit of the artificial lighting measurements that we can get from this file as well. So one of the first things that we need to do is establish the location of our project. We need to be able to get a latitude and longitude. You'll be able to do that underneath manage and location. And right now I'm not going to let this load. I'm on a fairly slow internet. Oh, that wasn't too bad actually. So I've just established my home base here, Springfield, Missouri as a location for this project. And there are a couple of different methods that we can begin to look at some lighting values with. So let's start just by doing a base rendering at the draft level. So my setting is exterior sun only. I'm going to look at my sun settings because uh, oftentimes the default is not something that we really want to work with. So I'm going to switch from lighting to a solar study still. So this brings in my location, a date, and time of day. So let's actually change our time of day to around 11 a.m. October 21st, 2015. Apply. Okay. And let's just do a draft rendering. So the draft rendering setting, I'm not going to have a lot of light bouncing around, so I'm not going to get a great light quality, but we can begin to get a reading on what's happening here. So the entire uh, rendering is a little bit in shade. Um, I know I really am not wild about the material that I have on the floor right now, but it's, it's sort of for rendering reasons here. But with a rendering, one of the things that's important to know not unlike working with a normal camera, I can adjust my settings to change how I can actually view this rendering. So if I come down to image adjust exposure, I could make this a brighter rendering by changing my exposure value. And this is essentially something that's very similar to adjusting the aperture and shutter speed on a camera itself. So one of the things that you really have to understand is that you don't really want to trust a rendering in terms of a full understanding of what's happening with lighting in the space. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that, close this, and just because I can't look at it any longer, let's change the material on the floor. Structure, carpet, and let's just change that to a cast in place concrete. Just a typical boring concrete floor. Okay, so with this set up now, let's look at one of the first ways we can actually begin to get at some lighting values. And one of the first ones is to use the cloud rendering. So I'm going to go to view, render in cloud. And I need to reference, right now I've got 3D View 2. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. One of the first things I need to do is name my view to something appropriate that I can remember. So let's rename this. So that was a right click on 3D View 2. I'm going to rename this just Lighting Study 1. So now I know when this comes back up, I'll be rendering Lighting Study 1.
So my 3D view, lighting study one, that's the only one that I want checked. I am not outputting a still image in this case. I actually want to output illuminance. And I can go ahead, let's go ahead and do a one megapixel image. And I'm going to select use date from view. So that's going to set me up October 21st at 2300. Wow, I really don't want 2300. That's in the middle of the night. Let's go ahead and go back and look at my time one more time on my rendering settings. Let's see, apply. 10 a.m. Let's see if that was able to keep that render setting here. Lighting study one, illuminance. Uh, those are both appropriately grayed out. I'm going to trust that it is grabbing that. I thought it actually updated those as I went along. I don't think it's doing that. Apparently, that's using current time. Other things to look at um, the type of sky model uh, in terms of how overcast and uh, the diffuse light, not just coming from the location of the sun, but the diffuse light from the overall uh, atmosphere. And on our legend, this is gonna render with foot candles currently, uh, looking at a gradient from zero to 200. I can change that to Lux, depending on the type of data that I want to display. And this is going to dive into your cloud credits as well, um, but it's only gonna take one. So my attitude is really render away. So this will upload to the cloud. And while that's rendering, we will look at another system of generating um, scientific data or measurement data in terms of our light levels in this space. And to use this other method, you will need to install a plugin into Revit from Autodesk. Um, if you do a, switch, a quick search for lighting analysis Revit 2016, you'll find this page. And this will have an overview of the features. And in particular, you will need to run this installer for Revit 2016. So let's go ahead and go back into Revit. So I've already done that. The new tools are going to show up under Analyze. And I need to be in a plan view to be able to access that tool set. So you'll see lighting analysis, run analysis and generate results. So let's go ahead and run, click run analysis. Oh, my first rendering is done there. It's nice to have that little pop up. Run analysis. And I should be getting a warning. Yeah, no rooms have been defined. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. So this is gonna build a couple of schedules for me, which is really nice. Um, but to have those schedules built, I'm going to need to provide some labels. So I'm gonna to go to annotate. And let's select the, well, it's actually under architecture. Sorry about that. Room. And let's click these. Continue. Room. Continue. And room. I'm getting a little warning message because I've run the simulation in this view before. Let's just come down here to schedules. Delete both of those. So let's name this lobby. Office and storage. So now when I go back to analyze, run analysis, I shouldn't get this warning message anymore, but I will sort of get my step by step instructions that I'm going to work with. So And so again, the process is gonna be very similar here. I'm actually going to be uploading this model to the cloud and it's going to do the lighting analysis for me in the cloud and give me some basic feedback on that. And again, this will work with artificial lighting. It's using LEED uh, as a protocol to, to do some certification. And we'll just go ahead and run start analysis. 
So um, we got that message that one of my renderings was done. So let's go back to view and render gallery. This will take just a few seconds to pop up. Uh, the joys of a satellite internet connection live and in action right there. It's wonderful. Okay. It's not as slow as dial-up, but it's really close. So I'm going to go to my specific location, my renderings, It's always a beautiful thing to forget your own password while well, screencasting. It happens. Okay, so lighting presentation. So this is the latest round of renderings. So it's the um, this particular guy right here. So we should be able to take a quick look at it. And you can see that this is getting us a basic idea of what's happening in this rendering. So let's open up another version of this uh, that I had done a little bit ago. So we can take a little closer look at what some of these renderings end up looking like. So simply by changing the materials, we're able to get sort of a wide variety. Well, I shouldn't say a wide variety, but we're able to definitely see some variations on the, on the type of rendering. Uh, changing the overhang on the outside of the building. Changing floor materials, so on and so forth, including adding in, I believe this last one, hopefully is adding in some light fixtures. So you can start to see how that's changing both uh, the wall around the wall sconce and some of the surfaces as well up here. So let's go back in to my Revit model and to analyze and let's look at the generate results. So we should be done here in just a second. I'm surprised it's not done yet. Usually these are really fast to run. So lighting analysis complete for lighting presentation two, one and one floors are completed. No cloud credits are used for this. It's a fairly new thing and usually it's not gonna use a lot of cloud credits as tools like this are being rolled out. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And well, actually you're gonna see generating those should populate my project browser with a few new files or a few new views I should say.
as long as nothing has crashed. There we go. Generate results. So it's noting that right now it's not meeting the lead requirements. So I know I've got a little bit of work that I'll need to do on that. But let's go ahead and look at the analysis as well. So you can see it's built a new floor plan view for me. Lighting analysis level one. And you can see I've got three spaces with uh, illuminance values in Lux on the floor plan. And there are a few things that I can do in terms of working with these values. One of them in particular is I can come in and begin to label rooms like this storage room and say yeah, that's that's not really an occupiable space. I can also begin to look at this in 3D. Let's see here. I should have a few of it. Three. No, but I'm not seeing it generated. Well, so I've got the floor plan view. Let's also go ahead and open up the schedule as well. So you can see this is giving me a basic breakdown of the data that's created for both floor and room schedule. So that really concludes this tutorial in terms of looking at the specific Revit tools for lighting. Again, the tools are certainly exciting and great tools to use. But again, what I always say the key to this is once you understand the tools, employing them correctly for design. So that's what I really encourage everybody to dive into, not just understanding how these tools work, but really exploring them for what you can do with them in terms of pushing your design and your design thinking further.